Hello and welcome to the Bay College Civics Corps Second Civics Corps Experience Podcast. The Civics Corps is a club at Baydenock Community College that focuses on civic engagement and intergenerational dialogue. This semester, we continue our work with waging dialogue to develop our civic diplomacy skills. To do so, Civics Corps members discuss a topic that could be seen as controversial or difference making with a partner from a different generation. We call this partnership a generational or conversational dyad. To capstone our club's work, each semester we produce a podcast that is a med dialogue or a reflective practice that allows us to explore how our discussions went. In this podcast, we will discuss our conversations how they impacted our skills, and what we learned from our dyad experiences. So without further ado, let's start the conversation. And to start the conversation, I guess we should all introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Chloe Polkovich. Um, I, this is my second year at Bay College, and this is my second semester in the Civics Corps. And I am Sam Combs. I am also a student at Bay College studying history and education, and I joined the Civics Corps last fall. I am Madison Provencher. I am also a student at Bay College. This is my first uh, semester with the Civics Corps, unfortunately my last as well because I just graduated. Um, but I will just hop right in and say that I know that my conversation that I had with slightly different experience than both Chloe and Sam because I had known my partner beforehand. He actually helped me build my house and I wanted to know him a little bit more so I asked my father-in-law to invite him over and I'm really happy to say that we're actually really good friends now and he kind of stops by my house to just to chit chat and um, but during our diet our more structured dyad uh, dialogue we talked about mainly kind of local history and the differences between our community and our generational differences and kind of how that impacted our upbringing. And a few just few little observations we made along the way, uh, but I had a really good time. And I'm gonna pass it over to Sam to hear about her conversation with her partner. So my interaction was really nerve wracking at first. I had never met this individual before. Um, and I was kind of just a little scared to see how it would go. Um, we decided to meet at the college. So at first, I was kind of just sitting there looking around because we didn't know each other, just kind of staring like, oh, is that the person I'm supposed to meet? But it ended up working out. And um, our conversation was centered around homeschooling. And uh, he had been homeschooled. And I had, had been homeschooled my whole um, life before college. So that was where we put our focus um, and after talking to him for the first time I realized that we would have no problem with a second conversation because we both had a tendency to go down rabbit holes that just made us ask more questions and dive deeper into our discussion. So for me I did know my person beforehand um, and even though I did know her, it was nerve wracking for me. And I ended up running down the hallway because I did not want to do this. <laughs> um, I was scared to do it. Uh, not that I didn't want to do it. I was just very nervous to do it. And I don't know why, because I knew her and she was a nice person. Um, and our conversation was the differences in our majors, which mine is history and hers was um, STEM. And I couldn't think of the word, but um, we talked about the differences in of the, of our majors and then also the generational differences um like she had family in stem for like like her grandmother was in stem her aunt her uncle her 
mom, her dad, they all were in STEM and she knew what she wanted to do from a young age. And I had no idea what I wanted to do from a young age because I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. Turns out I'm not good at science. So that was not good for me. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so we were all pretty nervous to meet our partners. I think that was a shared thread between all three of us. Um, like I said, uh, my partner helped build my house. So I invited him out to my to my house. So I was pretty lucky to have like familiar territory to be in. And I just kind of wanted to bridge our sort of like millennial baby boomer gap that we had. Um, just kind of, it was really helpful to have like that intention going into the conversation when I had already had these kind of assumptions about him that he was a bit misogynistic only based off of a few jokes that I'd heard and kind of like walked out the door the, the, the like second later um but if like if I hadn't had this conversation then I would still kind of be living with that and I'm glad that I kind of confronted my nervousness about like the whole process and um that was, I think that was, that was also kind of shared between all three of us too. Definitely. I, I like how you guys are friends now and that he can just stop by and chit chat with you. That was something that uh, my partner and I talked about at the end. He mentioned how he goes, well, I hope this is the end of our conversations and that it doesn't have to be about homeschooling, but we can pick up where we left off and keep going. And I'm not sure if that was the same for you, Chloe, but it, uh, it gave us more opportunities. We were more open-minded, I think, at the end of this. For sure. No, for me, I mean, we we know we're going to see each other around because it's just a small community that we live in, too. So we know we're going to see each other around, but we're probably not going to ever talk about it again whatsoever. And we're just probably going to be like, oh, remember that one time and just forget about it and walk away from each other and forget about it. Um, so we were kind of talking about um, how we were nervous meeting our partners. And I'm really thankful that I went on this process and to get over my own assumptions about him. Um, because if I hadn't, if I hadn't joined Civics Corps and I hadn't gone throughout the converse, conversation to have with him, I would I wouldn't know about like his advocacy for disabled people. I wouldn't know about all the work he's done to improve safety in his community. And I'm really grateful to kind of have that more background information, more context of who he is as a person and kind of build that rapport um, in a different way than I know, Sam, you had the shared experience of being homeschooled with your partner. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about your generational differences that you were able to kind of find throughout your process. So a lot of what we talked about uh, wasn't so much of a generational difference as it was more so along the lines of stereotyping the group of homeschool kids, homeschool people in general. Um, we were homeschooled at different, obviously different, ages um but it was kind of the same both of our parents agreed that homeschooling would be a better fit for their kids and that's how it got started um the one of the differences would be probably along the lines of my partner got to travel a lot being homeschooled and that's where a majority of their learning took place was in those travels and things that they learned more hands-on whereas mine was my mom was my teacher and then in high school her mom friends that also homeschooled were my other teachers and we went off of a very uh it was strict in some ways and strict enough but we went off of a textbook and curriculum that had to be followed um whereas my partner's was more along the lines of let's just see what we're going to learn about today and focus on learning with a hands-on open approach experience um but the stereotypes that we did talk about, um, a lot of it revolved around, for me anyways, my main questions were revolving around um, 
like social skills. Um, it's it's said quite often. I heard it a lot growing up that homeschool kids do not lack or do not have the social skills lacking like social graces that other public school kids might have. And I was wondering if my partner had felt the same way, um, especially considering that he got to travel a lot more than I did. I was wondering if he kind of made up for that stereotype in that way. And he felt that he had, he didn't, he didn't feel like he grew up with that same aspect. But I'm trying to, that would probably be the main, the main focus was just picking up those social skills that I knew I had wanted to gain once I entered college, whereas my partner had felt he'd always had them. And then another one I remember is just uh, something I had noticed growing up was uh, a lot of jokes regarding homeschooling that we both had shared like uh, I know at one point we mentioned how we would just say oh we were homeschooled we didn't learn that or oh my mom was my teacher so just just to make up just to be funny like obviously we all still knew things and um, with my education my uh, diploma says I graduated from a local high school so I had to show that I had made those passing grades and actually did study um but I know one joke when I was growing up was that homeschool kids didn't know how to write their names on top of assignments because our mom knew all of our handwriting. So we never had to write our names. That, that was one that we had, we had talked about. Um, so just little, little things along those lines, just what the stereotypes from public school versus homeschooling would be. That's really cool that you guys were able to talk about that. And you, I know you guys' um, childhoods were so like very different, but having like that shared um, educational platform, I suppose. Uh, for me and my partner, it was a little bit, I keep saying it's a little bit different, but uh, for us, it was that we were a little bit lower on the social economic scale. So something that I, I like he kind of talked about a little bit and I just kind of wanted to know more about it but when he was in high school he would travel an hour to Marquette to play football either by bus or hitchhiking because you know it was safe to do that back then and and he was he was kind of got like a lot of gruff from like the local football players and um they were all like booster kids and it was it was kind of nice having that that shared, not that shared memory, but kind of like that uh, sensation of uh, kind of growing out of that and kind of building out of your community. Um, so I know we talked about stereotyping and another topic that we were gonna kind of discuss was gender. And Chloe, I know that you and your partner uh, were both women, unlike Sam and I's partner. Uh, could you tell us what she had to mention about being like a woman in STEM? Kind well, of yeah. I, I guess gender and stereotyping in our conversation kind of crossed paths with each other. Like she said, when she was younger, there were a lot of kids like, oh, you're a smart girl. You're a girl. You're smart. You can't be smart. You can't be good at math. You're a girl. So that's like gender and stereotypes, in my opinion. Um, and I haven't had as much yet because I'm still coming into my major. I'm not like high up like my partner was, but I've had someone go like, you shouldn't do history. I did history. I'm a manager at a grocery store now. And I'm like thinking, just because that happened to you doesn't mean it's going to happen to me. I'm passionate. Your wife didn't want to move to Chicago. That's your problem, not mine. See you later. So that's pretty much what we had. And I know she had a lot of boys picking on her. But another thing about the stereotypes is she said that 
the nerdy kids would pick on her in high school or college. I couldn't remember. She said she was a tour in either high school or college for the hockey team. I think it was college. She was a tutor for the hockey team in college and they'd kind of all protect her and in movies or tv shows it's the jock making fun of the nerdy kid but in this case it's the nerdy kids making fun of the other nerdy smart kid and then the jock's coming to protect her so i thought that was interesting <laughs> Yeah, Sam, was that something that you guys were able to touch base on? That that was really sweet that they were able to protect her. That was cute. Um, Kind of, yes. So along the lines of what you were saying about, you know, history majors might end up working at grocery stores, my partner and I did talk about how one aspect of homeschooling was um, once I reached 16 years old, my mom asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up. And at that point in time, I wanted to be a theater major, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> and um, she started catering all of my classes towards what I eventually wanted to go to college for. And I liked that I was able to really like personalize my high school studies. And um, my sisters did the same thing. Uh, my sisters are in the same grade I was in. And we each would study the same basics, but then uh, started dual enrolling at bay in order to get our gen eds in and start really focusing on our careers and that was something that um i appreciated being homeschooled that we could focus on different different studies and not not be limited to what maybe would have been at high school i know now a lot of the high school kids at like uh the public schools around here are dual enrolled i know that's still a thing but i felt like i had a very wide variety and um that was that was one of our uh, topics, but he also had mentioned he goes history education. Well, I hope you're not planning to be rich. I said, well, uh, not really, but I just I like that now. This could also go towards maybe gender differences. How with your partner, um, a woman in STEM was not as likely, but things are a little bit different now to where I know a lot of women that are still going into like the nursing program at Bay that are studying things I've never heard of and never planned to hear of. And they're very, very, very smart. So it's, it's nice to see now that there's more of an open mind to people, um, people's studies. And that was something my partner and I agreed on that there's lots of women now that are going into engineering versus just, just going into teaching, which I mean, teaching is what I'm going into. So obviously I hold it of really high value and I, I think I have to study a lot, but that that ties into what you were saying, Chloe. Yeah, I like that you got your um personalized classes for what you want to do. I think that's cool. And I think in public school, you could do that a little bit because I know I had my senior year, I had two history online classes, and I know there's dual enrollment at Bay if you want to be a welding person. I know they do welding or at the Vogue Center. So I, but I don't think it's as personalized as it would be if you were like homeschooled, like Sam. So I think that's really cool. I know dual enrolling was definitely something that you could do and still could do through like the colleges, but that's uh, my, my mom would also focus our studies a lot on what she knew we wanted. I remember she told my sister growing up who hates math, if you can find one job where you don't need math and convince me that that's what you want to do growing up, we will never open this algebra book again. And obviously that didn't happen, but she, she let us, uh, she let us, I know for one example that she let us do, um, I love to read now, but growing up, I hated it. And I was not, I didn't enjoy it. I wasn't very good at it. She would 
she knew that I appreciated like theater and film and she would let me watch documentaries as long as I could answer the same exact test that my sisters could and pass the same exact questions she'd let me find roundabout ways to do it and that's something that we both really appreciated growing up was that we had more of a more of a open-minded roundabout way of learning and different different methods that met our our needs that's such a cool idea worked out great <laughs> It really does sound like she really she set you up to be like a really independent learner too, so that you can like go mm -hmm. out there and keep building uh your interests and your skills. And I think that's something we're gonna talk about next is kind of uh Sam, I'd like to start with you. Uh being homeschooled, you mentioned your social skills that you kind of wanted to develop in college. So I was wondering what skills you learned um or fine-tuned while you were in civics core. Well, um, I was very, very nervous about meeting someone else who was homeschooled. I couldn't tell at first if it was going to be, oh, I experienced the same things you did or if it was going to be completely different. And I wanted there to be a variety, but at the same time, I was secretly hoping that he had the same questions I did, like, oh, I lacked those social skills. Oh, I missed this. I missed out on this. Or I really appreciated this. And I liked that we could, that I could expand my thoughts on homeschooling. Um, that's probably one of the main uh, things I would take away from this. But I also learned to start a conversation myself, whereas usually I would wait for somebody else to start a conversation and then put in my input. Now I could kind of, I had to start this conversation. I had to reach out and be like, hey, would you be willing to meet with me? Would you be willing to meet with me again? Let's line up our schedules. And uh I liked how I got comfortable with it almost immediately to where the second time wasn't as nerve wracking. Um, even throughout the first conversation, me and my partner talked for hours until one of us had another meeting to go to and we're attempting to plan a third meeting, but life got in the way. So we didn't get to do that. I just, I feel more comfortable having conversations, whether it be about homeschooling or schooling in general and just kind of what really stuck out was how often we did go down these rabbit holes it didn't we didn't have to stick on topic so making sure that I am now comfortable in almost any topic and that it's okay to kind of just ramble the rambling babbling doesn't have to be structured and uniformed it it's okay to just keep going but that that was what I would take away what about what about you um, yeah, the kind of just sitting down and kind of practicing having a conversation. So uh, while you were in homeschool, I was in public school my entire life, but moving around as much as I did, I didn't really develop the same skills of like friend making and conversation starting. So just to like have this, this practice um, with somebody I had reservations about and kind of getting over my own assumptions that I had about him and was being lucky as I was uh, being in my own home. But I think that we're, our advisor, Dr. Cleese was very good at giving us a lot of options to like who we would talk to, um, like with your homeschooling and then Chloe's uh, STEM versus history. Um, I really enjoyed just um, being a part of that process too, because that was kind of behind the scenes. Um, but what I did want to mention to anybody watching is that volunteering for these conversations are really important. And it's a great way to do some civic engagement in your own community and just learning about other people. And I would like to know a little bit more about Chloe and the skills that she uh, developed here during the semester? Well, um, I'm kind of gonna jump to what Sam had said about, uh, I don't start conversations. I will wait until someone comes up to me and talks to me. And if no one comes up and talks to me, I'm not gonna talk. I might at school, I might at work, but if I'm in like Walmart or something, I'm just gonna not say anything to anybody unless someone says hi to me first and then I'll be like, oh, hi, but that's about it. So 
And we had to start the conversation. We had to be like, hey, what's a good time to meet? Does this day work? Does this day work? Whatever. And then we had to go there and make sure we went there and like knock on the door and be like, hey, I'm here. Let's have our conversation now, which I was also nervous about. Like I said before, I ran away uh, down the hallway, but yeah, I think that's one of the things. Um, and then I was thinking of something else, but it totally got away from me. Um, yeah, that's it from now. Unless I can think of what else I was going to say. That's okay. Well, one of the things you mentioned, Madison, that I want to tie in here is how the like the key word was volunteer, volunteering for these. Um, when I first thought about my diet partner and meeting with them it was just this is a homework assignment I have to get this done I have a deadline once I took that aside and realized I'm volunteering for this because I want to have a conversation and I want to learn more about this person I want to be able to open my social social skills and talk more then it made it a lot easier and a lot uh a lot more beneficial for me knowing that I volunteered to do this I was helping myself and my skills that I wanted to grow. Yeah, that's so fantastic. Um, it's been such a treat, like hearing about your guys' um, experiences and conversations, but I'm going to go ahead and introduce our advisors. Um, if Dr. Cleese would love to come in and do our outro for us. Well, sure thing. And here comes Allison and Matt as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a great discussion and I really enjoyed uh, taking in your, your experiences. Um, you know, you, you, you had a lot of rich opportunity for dialogue across difference. Um, you had the intergenerational component, which is one aspect of it, but you also um, had topical differences or, or within the same topic you had Right. Like with Sam's experience, you had these interesting differences and that you got to explore and you all overcame some nervousness, too, which was amazing to see how you did that, because that's part of what we work on. Right. Is to be self-aware about how you're you're kind of having those emotional reactions and the fight, flight or freeze instinct, you know, that kind of thing. So nice job this semester. We're very proud of you. And we're really, um, really, it's really been great just to, to hear you tidy this up at, at semester's end. And to that aim, I'd like to thank you all as we wrap things up, uh, as well as your dyad partners for your time this semester. And for our audience, uh, each winter semester, civics course students participate in a series of interactive sessions that focus on building civic diplomacy skills. And these are job ready skills. This is a resume building experience. The students learned concepts and practice dialogue techniques in an interdisciplinary approach based on historical and psychological methods that gave them the social and behavioral science based awareness of how to effectively engage in dialogues across difference. Additionally, the students practice critical thinking, organizational, and time management skills as they outreach to their dyad and uh, partners and selected topics for their intergenerational listening sessions. Then they use their public speaking skills um, to design this podcast and conduct what is a meta-analysis of their experiences. I'd like to thank my dear colleagues, uh, Mr. Matt Bugatti Hello. and Dr. Alice Mayer both of uh, organization waging dialogue for their time, care, and expertise in this work. As a group, we're also grateful for the support of the staff, administration, and faculty of Bay College, located in Escanaba, Michigan, and Iron Mountain, Michigan, under the leadership of Dr. Narita Hughes, along with the members of the Collaborative for Compassionate Civic Engagement, who have served as the Civics Corps Advisory Board. I'd also like to thank the community members who volunteered to work with our students, especially um, those of uh, the Dialogue Connection Group Delta Chats. The dialogue work that the students uh, did this semester is critically important in our times. It's part of a rising phenomenon in our country's history that's called the United States Civic Wellness Movement, which is a widespread organic rise of average Americans who have had enough of our era's brand of toxic, 
polarization, the combativeness, all that stuff that we see on TV, in the halls of governance, and in social media. It serves as a counterforce to this kind of divisive and tribalistic forces that are endangering the maintenance of our republic's constitutionally based domestic tranquility and general welfare as fundamental blessings of liberty. We're glad that you shared time with us today. If you feel led, to learn more about civic diplomacy skills for your everyday life, I strongly encourage you to visit Waging Dialogue's website. You can also learn more about the broader dialogue movement in the United States at this time by going to the Listen First Project's website, and the Listen First Project hosts the National Week of Conversation every April. Now, also for a catalog of uh, and calendar of dialogue trainings and events across the country, you can also visit the website for Citizen Connect to find events that you can connect into to start practicing your dialogue skills in addition to the work that Waging Dialogue does. Thank you for watching. May the dialogues of our times forge a more perfect union, one that is functional, healthy, and hope-filled for ourselves and posterity. It's time to wage dialogue.